In this exercise, imagine that you are a GIS technician working for a city planning department. You often get asked for community mapping data. However, each user wants the data in different formats, so you must create a self-serve solution that lets them customize the output. Start FME Workbench. From the Start menu, go to All Programs, FME Desktop 2015, click on FME Workbench. In the Getting Started section, click on Generate Workspace. For the reader format, start ty typing in ESRI Geodatabase. Select the file GeoDB API format. For the source Geodatabase, click on the Browse button and navigate to C, FME Data 2015, Data, Community Mapping, and select communitymap.gdb. For the writer format, type in generic and click the generic any format format. For the data set, let's write to C FME Data 2015 Output Tutorial. Click Select Folder. Click OK again to generate the workspace. When you see the Select Feature Types dialog, go ahead and just click OK and all of the feature types will be added to the canvas. Now we'll create a published parameter that will allow the end user to select the output format. In the Navigator window, which is usually in the left part of the Workbench dialog, right-click on the section marked User Parameters. Click the option Add Parameter. In the dialog that pops up, let's select Choice with Alias as the parameter type. Scroll up to find Choice with Alias and select it. The name of this parameter will be Output Format, and the prompt to the user will also be Output Format. Then click the button to the right of the Configuration field. In this dialog, we can define which formats we want the user to have access to. We can do this quickly by dropping down the Import button and selecting Writer Formats. In this selection dialog, select several formats. The quickest way to do this is to use the search at the bottom left. Let's pick four formats that the user can select. AutoCAD, DWG Format, and Esri Shape. Next, do a search on GML. And the last format, let's choose a Map Info format. Map Info tab. Once we're done selecting the four formats, click OK to close the dialog. And we'll click OK once more to close all remaining dialogs. Now that we've created a user parameter, in other words, a way for the user to make a choice, we must assign this to an existing writer. So back in the Navigator window again, we'll locate the generic writer and expand the parameter section. Locate the parameter for output format. Right click on the output format parameter and choose the option to link to user parameter. When prompted, select our newly created parameter called output format and link it. Let's also give the user the ability to select an output coordinate system. We'll do this in the same way that we added the output format user parameter. So back in the navigator pane, locate the user parameter section. Right click and select add parameter. For the type, again, choose choice with alias. We'll call this user parameter coordinate system. The prompt to the user will also be coordinate system. And click on the button next to configuration. Click the import button and this time choose coordinate system. We'll allow the user to choose from one of two coordinate systems. A lat long 84 coordinate system and a UTM-83 coordinate system.
hit OK, and hit OK again. To assign this user parameter to the appropriate writer, locate the writer in the Navigator pane. Then, locate the Coordinate System parameter underneath it. Right-click on the Coordinate System parameter, select Link to User Parameter, and in the drop-down, select our newly created User Parameter Coordinate System. Click OK. Now let's allow the user to select which feature types, in other words, layers or tables, he wants to read from the source data. This has a special parameter that we can set up in a single step. In the Navigator window, locate the GeoDatabase Reader and expand its parameters. Expand the Feature Types to Read parameters and right-click on the Feature Types to Read parameter at the bottom. Select the option Create User Parameter. This opens a dialog in which the list of available tables are defined. This is a special dynamic parameter so that if the source data changes, the list will change too. Click OK to close the dialog. Save the workspace by clicking the Save button on the toolbar. Navigate to an output location. Here we'll go to see FME Data 2015, Workspaces, Server Tutorial, and I will call this Exercise 4A, followed by my name to keep it unique. Click the Save button. Publish the workspace to FME Server by going to the File menu and selecting Publish to FME Server. Enter the FME Server URL. Enter the username tutorial, then enter the password. Click Next. Ensure the repository name is the tutorial repository. This time we'll use data that is already stored as a shared resource on FME server, so simply click the Next button to continue. The final step is to register what services to record the workspace against. Uncheck the Job Submitter service and check the box marked Data Download. Now click the Publish button. The workspace and the source dataset are published to the FME server. We'll run this workspace on FME server. In your web browser, navigate to the tutorial server. Click on the Run Workspace button. Now click on the Tutorial Repository, and then click on the workspace we just uploaded to FME Server. Click on the Data Download Service. And now we're presented with the published parameters for this workspace. Scroll down until you start seeing the parameters that you configured in the workspace. Output Format, Coordinate System, and Feature Types to Read. For output format, drop down the list and notice the four formats that we set up. We'll select Map Info tab for this run. The coordinate system has two options, and for feature types to read, we can click Select All and notice all the layers are shown. We'll turn off most of them and translate the first three feature types. For Source Geo Database, Remember that when we publish to the FME server, I mentioned that the data is already stored as a shared resource on this FME server. So we're going to browse to the resources. Click on Data, expand that folder, and then click on communitymap.gdb. Scroll down a little more. Notice there is some developer information on this form as well. If you expand the developer information, Notice there's a selection of useful information if you wish to create a custom web page for your end users. This will prevent them from having to log into FME Server through this interface and give them a shortcut to downloading the data. Now click Run Workspace. We've got a data download URL. Click on that and the zip file is downloaded to our computer. 
We'll unzip the zip file. And looking inside the tutorial folder, we see we have three MapInfo tab files, and each of them corresponds to the layers that we selected in the FME server web interface.